اکرام على نبينا حبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا ابي القاسم محمد وعلى اهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم ومبغضيهم وغاصبيهم حقوقهم من يومنا هذا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه تبارك وتعالى في الكتاب المجيد والفرقان الحميد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر ان الانسان لفي خسر الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صلوات this majlis as far as i am concerned is the first majlis in which Mullah Bashir Rahim is not present and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken him away from us a year ago. In his memory we first start with Surah Fatiha. May Allah bless him with maqfira and reward him for all that he did for Islam on our behalf and on behalf of Islam. And the journey of akhirat is made comfortable and easy for him. But this is how the days pass. It is now a year since he has gone. And Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi, said, Oh man, and of course when he said oh man, he meant all of us, his contemporaries and those to come. Oh man, just think of how hours pass into days, and days pass into weeks, weeks develop into months, and months into years without even you realizing how quickly and how fast it passes away. And this is how your life will pass when you will one day, if at all you get Ibra and draw lesson from your life, sit back to realize that it has passed. It has gone. Even today, nostalgically, when we sit down, we have the idea of how life has gone away 60 years, 50 years or more, just like a dream. It is because of this reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal-Asr. Wow, here is for oath and qasam. It is not a conjunction, it is for qasam. Wal-Asr. That means I take oath by Asr. Now ulama have written many things about Asr. All of them are acceptable to us. We don't have to dispute. Some have written Asr is Asr Ashura. Some have written Asr is the era of Imam Zaman when he comes. Some have written Asr is Namaz Asr, Salat al Asr. We don't have anything to object to any of the tafasir. These are all ta'awilat. But the Straight meaning is, I take oath by time. Al-Asr. The era in which we live is Asr. And God does not need to take oath to establish the truth as we have to. Because we, if we have to establish our truthfulness, we go to the court, for example, and we take an oath. 
It doesn't apply for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take an oath. So why does he take an oath? One of the reasons why he takes oath is to enhance the value of the object of which he takes the oath. In your estimation, to enhance the value. وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا Nafs here is your self. And this wow again is for qasam. وَنَفْسٍ and I take oath by yourselves, the self, human self. And what a beautiful thing it has been for Allah to make me appreciative of the maker. What a thing he has made. So here it is. And in order to enhance and elevate in our estimation, the value of time we live in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal Asr. We don't have any value for time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us that this time, the paradigm, the framework in which you pass your days and night is very valuable. Inna li insana lafi khosab. There is no doubt that man is in dire loss. When you want to announce something, if you announce it the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has announced, that man is in dire loss, it doesn't mean that he was giving you good tidings, he is now warning you. Therefore it is a warning. Otherwise you could have said that man, I have created man is always successful, or man is always to be the subject of my compassion and, and mercy. No. Inna li insana lafi khosal. Man is in dire loss. Now that is just for us to awaken what the maker is telling us. He is the one who made us. And he tells us. And the word al-insan here is for jinns. That means humankind. You see? The word insan used here is not for a man, single individual, it is whole insaniya. Al alam al insaniya. Alam al insaniya means the human world. So humankind is in dire loss. Naturally, when those people who heard for the first time, they were all surprised. What does Allah want to say now if you are in a loss? What is a loss after all? We are all business people, so there is no need to tell you. But the worst loss that you and I can sustain is the loss of capital. I mean, in a single bargain that I might lose some money, that loss I can sustain. If I have bought something for two pounds and sold it, or had to sell it for a pound and a half, I sustain the loss. In that particular transaction, I will make some money in the next. But when the capital sustains a loss, it means you are going down the drain. Allah says, Wal asr, your capital is your time. Inna insana lafi man is in dire loss in respect of the capital that I have given him. The time he is losing through which he lives, except illa. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not said illa, we would have all gone. But Allah said illa, except, and that is how he has saved. Only those do not sustain the dire loss who have faith. And do good deeds. And they tell each other to do good, to do the right thing. Bequeath, actually. Just like father bequeathing property to son. Enjoy. What Awaso be sober and they also enjoy people to sustain some of the losses that they may have, to be patient in the days which may not be very congenial and conducive. The first condition is Amanu. Now many people say, what about those who do good deeds and they are not Muslims? This is the first question actually. Allah says, Walladina Amanu. 
But naturally this electricity that I am benefited from and all of us are was not done by a Mormon, they say. Hmm? It was done by Edison. And Edison was not a Mormon. But now we are all benefiting from it. Will Allah give him the benefit and the reward for what good he has done? Had he had not discovered all these things, there would have been no loudspeaker today to reach the voice. Hmm? All sorts of things that we have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Try to understand what I'm trying to tell. It is not going to be an ordinary discourse. Please, let us go to the depth of things in life. My friends, good deeds and bad deeds are relative. Unless you fix up an authority, there is no meaning to what is good and what is bad. You go to the society which is Western society, I mean English or say French or European society, huh? and you find them do things which are not good in our society. Say they're drinking, for example, or they have togetherness, or say they have um, dancing or whatever, which is un-Islamic as far as the Islam value is concerned. But to them, it isn't bad at all. I mean, the question of bad doesn't arise there. For them, it is something normal. If you say this is not good, they will ask you, why? I mean, I'm no, 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 no uh, reflection, but in Mombasa there was a time if any young boy came to the Imam Bargah without a cap, any elderly person would send him back home. Not necessarily your father or your uncle, no, no. Any elderly person sitting there would say, go home and tell your mommy to give you a cap. Don't come to Imam Bara without a cap, because it is very bad. It was supposed to be unethical. Today, if you see, we are the only two old men out here, <laughs> you see, and all of you mominin are sitting without caps, and we cannot say that you are wrong and we are right. Nor can we say that they were wrong then and they are now, because wrongs and, wrongs and goods don't change, my friend. If it is wrong, it is wrong. It is an immutable value. It can't be, it can't be relative. So what is good? The doctors tell me, what about mercy killing? The question arises, euthanasia. When I know that, <coughs> thank you. I don't know how it works, but I... Right? We want to kill him because he is now seriously ill. And to kill him is called mercy killing. That means you kill him and you are also merciful to him. You are obliging him that you are dispatching him earlier so that he may not suffer more. Now, is that mercy killing? The question arises. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that life was given by me and I have the right to take and therefore you don't interfere. Ghalib says, Jaan di di huwi usi ki thi. The soul was given by him. He gave the soul, the soul was given by who? Haq to ye hai ki haq ada na hua. The truth is that we haven't been able to pay him for that. Now, a man is dying, and we have seen not once or twice, but so many times, the doctors tell me that now the life support should be removed because this is an artificial living. And the parents said, oh, allow him one more day, and the boy rises again. Now, if he had been dispatched yesterday, the doctor would not give him life again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the giver of life. He says it is haram. And... How many things that we think? There was a gentleman in Mombasa, for example, who had 13 children. How many? 13. Today it is unthinkable. And, and when the sons were being born, people used to criticize and say, Paisa Chene, Shokrao Karit. He has no money and he has a new calendar every year. You see, that was the type of criticism people like us made because we were then young. And we thought we knew the whole world. We knew everything. 
we philosophized and pontification was done by the youths that to pass sentences against others there are they have these elderly people they don't understand they don't have money enough to even to live and and every year they have a child oh, fine what happened was they grew up in difficult days no doubt they grew up in very difficult days but they had faith in who in the giver and the sustainer they didn't die they didn't starve they lived but they lived with some difficulty right today each and each and every one of those 13 is a millionaire today now when we sit our children we, we youngsters who were young then and now we are getting old we say it was high the main power hoy to now <coughs> now we are justifying by saying that yes it is main power but today it is main power yesterday it wasn't main power allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not know about main power huh he knew today every one of them is mashallah and you as a community member i myself sometimes go to the doors to say baba masjid bana which we want to make a mosque give something is it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why the prophet said marry and multiply and for everyone who comes in your house there is a giver don't say that uh, two children how can i sustain the third the one who maintain you and sustain you till you reach this age is sustaining the children also <laughs> so who will decide what is good and what is bad my friends if i tell the government i came here i wanted to become a citizen so they asked me your police record my police record was alhamdulillah good no 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 crimes big or small fine they said so you are all right but uh, uh you have to sign the oath of allegiance that means to sign to say that you will follow who the queen and her government i said baba i have not done anything and i promise you i will not do anything i will not even go into the no entry yeah? i will follow your traffic laws i will pay your income tax regularly everything no 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 to excess of books hmm? I will act upright. You say, they say yes. That is that is what we want of you. But you sign the oath of allegiance. Why? Because whatever you say is good must be according to the Queen and her government. Not because you think this is right. Tomorrow you might like this gully and enter and say, I like this gully, but this is no entry. Whether you like the Lord, your father-in-law lives there, or you live there, you just can't enter because the government has told you it is. No, and come from the other way. So then you cannot say that. I mean, sir, will you? It's not like that. You have to see what. That is the reason why you must have oath of allegiance. Iman is oath of allegiance. What Allah will tell me is good, and what Allah will tell me is bad. That means Allah says, in Quran is, "Wa ma ata kumur Rasulu fakhuru, wa ma naha kum anhu fadhu." Whatever the Prophet gives you, take it, and whatever he stops you from, forbids, forbids. This is the meaning of Amanu. So now, will Allah reward them? Yeah, well, Allah has said in the Quran, "I will reward them," but I know how to reward them. I can reward them in this life. I will never waste anybody's effort. Huh? I can do whatever, but that you leave it to me. What reward I am going to give it to those who have faith and iman is something different. from that which i give to them i will not waste anybody's effort but what you will get is something else walladhina amanu wa amilus salihat and they do good my friends if you are a doctor and you don't act according to medicine what will happen you you are a redundant doctor ha huh? you are an engineer but you are not acting according to the knowledge you have then you are retired or something gone beyond the ledge but if you are an alim and you don't have amal salih it doesn't mean that you must have amama on your head no do you know that namaz subuh is wajib so you are an alim of that masala you know that namaz zuhur asr is wajib you are an alim of that masala you know that maghrib isha we have 17 rakat in a day you are an alim of that masala you know that ramadan we must fast you are an alim of that masala 
You know that when Quran is being read, we must listen if you can't read. It is an alim of that mas'ala. We nafila is after every namaz. We know that is what we know. And so on. Eid comes, Ramadan comes, Muharram comes. There are so many things we know. You cannot say we do not know. In fact, by the virtue of this member, subhanAllah, we know so many. What is lacking is amal according to what we know. You see that? So if you have amal, it must be according to iman and your ilm. Amilus salihat wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bil sabr. After every namaz of Maghrib, Mawlana sit down and give namaz masail people. Uh, Haji Sultan is here and many others, I don't know. Right when Mawlana is giving masail fiqh, people go out. It happens in all of us. Mawlana has said just after namaz of Maghrib, she has to give us masail to increase our ilm. And the boys and the elderly and all of the out. Now, if they have something urgent to uh, attend to, it's okay. But no, they are outside smoking, <laughs> whiling away their time. Molana is there. There are six, eight people there listening to him. The rest are all outside. What is the idea? The idea is either we don't, we aren't interested, or we don't want to know anything more, or we know quite a bit Molana, more than Molana himself. Or the idea is that we should not know, so that we may not have to act. Sheikh Murtaza Mutahari writes in his, one of his books, a small story, he says that mother took her son to Mualim, he was a bright boy, and Mualim taught him the first day Alif. Alif. And he memorized Alif, Alif. He was a very brilliant boy. He said, Alif, Alif, Alif. He came home, the mother said, what did you today? He said, I learned Alif. So fine. Alhamdulillah. Second day, as the teacher said, now Ba, and he would not respond. He would not even speak. Say Ba. As if he was not in his mind. The teacher tried hundred times, but when the mother came, the teacher complained and said, your son stopped at Alif. And now he doesn't want to cooperate. Either. I don't know whether he understands or he doesn't. So the mother asked him at home. He said, Mommy, if I go to Bath, then I'll go to Ta. I don't want to. <laughs> I already learned one lesson from Alif. Now I'm going to Bath. After Bath, if I say Bath, then he will take me up to the last. If I stop from here, it's all over. <laughs> huh? So either we don't want to. If we sit down, then Molana will tell us what to do. If we don't, we don't know anything. We can tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We did not know. This is the type of thinking that we have. And for that reason, it is Allah says, What tawasaw bil haq. Sayyid Muhammad Hussain Tabatabai in his in Al Mizan says, This is tawasaw bil haq is more than Amr bil Maruf. Amr bil Maruf is. If somebody does something wrong, you tell him not to do it. Or he's not doing something wajib or good, you tell him to do it. Right. But he says this is more than that. For it includes even aqaid. That means if he is wrong somewhere, making a mistake in his beliefs, in his faith, you show him what are the right beliefs. That means because aqaid are together, that means it is more than just amr al-maruf of furu adin. It is usul adin together. So we have got to. There is one famous philosopher, his name is Al-Biruni, who, 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 uh, who visited India. There is a book by him, Al-Biruni, in which he writes about religions of India. And he writes about Veda and Upanishad, because he lived in India for quite long. Al-Biruni knew Indian religions, Indian customs, and he learned so many religions. When he came back, he wrote. And apart from that, he was an astronomer, he was a mathematician, and he had so many qualities, but he wrote also in India. We have got his book still today, Al-Biruni. He fell ill very at advanced age, and he was dying, actually. 
people were just waiting to listen from his house the cries and all that. Instead of that, he knew that in his own location there was one alim, faqih, so he sent for him. That alim thought, I have been asked to come here just for Fatiha and to help him go. Dua and all that. He came there. He, just as he came there, Biruni said, Ahlan wa sahlan. Thank you for coming. I have a mas'ala to ask. This Mulana was really baffled. He said, this man at this, in this stage, when he is now going, he has got a mas'ala to ask. He said, what is this mas'ala about? He said, this is a mas'ala about inheritance in Islam. If it was a bit uh, intricate mas'ala, so he asked the mas'ala, but Faqih gave him the reply and said, in this case, it will be like this, like this, and like this. And as he stood up, the Molana said, he said, Biruni, may Allah give you long life, but it seems that you are departing from me. Why are you worried about this? He said, Molana, don't you think I will die richer if I know one masala more? <laughs> you see, I will die richer if I know one masala more. What is wrong in that? He said, yes, that is correct. And as Molana left, before he reached home, he died, Al Biruni. But he died with one masala. Moho. Well, this is what we have got to understand. So you can see how human life is represented in this surah. Wal asr inna linsana lafi khosr illa alladheena amanu amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haq wa tawasaw bil sab. But those who have given their life, like Mullah Sahib, whom are we remembering tonight, today, this afternoon, it could have been a comfortable life for him sitting at home. The children were there to look after him, huh? and he would have had good. But to engage in teaching, in imparting, in telling others what is right, what is wrong, and in so doing sometimes <laughs> incurring the displeasure of so many who don't like to be told the truth. Huh? But to be patient with them and to try to explain what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, at the age when we are still young, huh? when we have gone old, it is something else. But when you are young, and you are made to realize then, in your youth, that your life has got a meaning, and that don't waste your life, see your life is invested in such a way that you reap the fruits which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Not only in becoming very pious, but in becoming serviceable to humanity. I mean, pass your days in a manner that bears the fruit. You see, don't tell me that what about working, what about earning? Well, I never, Islam never was against earning for the sake of maintaining your family. You see? But now just let us compare a life of a businessman who was engaged in nothing else but business, earned millions and kept his family away, I mean, in good ways and kept the wolf away from the door. And there is a man who perhaps did not earn that much, but the man served the community, served humanity, wrote books or spoke or guided or even gave his time, money for people. This too. This is a richer life than that. <coughs> that life is a life which if we go and probe deeply into it, we will find it is empty life. This is a richer life, my friend, the life of experience where he will tell you that I have been able to serve humanity in the way I could. You see, there's a difference in this. If we go into individual cases, then we can find, but there is no time for that. But otherwise you'll find that although, you see, all that glitters, my friends, is not gold. You have found someone, mashallah, with the Mercedes or double R or whatever, or Jaguar, and you you think he is, he is very happy? You don't know where that Jaguar pinches him. Do you know that? <coughs> Do we know where the shoe pinches? Only the wearer knows where the shoe pinches. You see, uh, and so many places where I have been, I have seen, mashallah, turn over, turn over, and turn over, and turn over, and overturn. <laughs> you see? What happened was everything was empty, empty, and empty, but the people were impressed. But there is a man who has invested his time in serving the people. And all the same time he eats, 
he drinks, he has got his own wife, children. They are also brought up well, but he has the, is there to, to, to give the benefit of his life the way a candle gives. That it exists, but the life also, the light from it which emanates, gives so much of glimmer and brilliance to others. Darkness is dispelled. This is what Sayyidu Shuhada did in Karbala. But we just now listen to this Marcia. This Marcia that he read was a Majlis. There was no need for any Majlis after that. When our both young boys, they read Marcia, there is no need of any Majlis after that because that was Majlis itself. I mean, we have to understand that Marcia itself is also a Majlis. But the institution of Majlis started with Rifa, with Marcia, in the days of Imam alayhi salam. So that is Majlis. We just have to remind that this is what Sayyidu Shuhada did. Well, as he was coming from Mecca going to Kufa, there was one who was trying to avoid Imam Hussein Alayhis. They were traveling on the same route, but he was trying to avoid because he did not want Imam Hussein Alayhis to call him or to summon him or to ask him to join. He was Uthmani. Uthmani means he belonged to the camp of Uthman. That means he was though among those who did not affiliate with Imam Ali salam. In fact, he thought Imam Ali was responsible for the killing of Uthman. So there was a group which was called Uthmani, trying to avenge for the blood of He was Usman. And Imam Hussain Islam was proceeding towards Kufa and he always kept himself one manzil behind. But there was somehow a need of replenishment of water stock because the water was now exhausted. So they met at one manzil, but just opposite. When he came there and he stopped there for a night, Imam Hussain Islam in the evening as they were having meal there, sent some of one of his friends and said, Go and tell the master of the camp, his name is Zuhair ibn al Qain. Tell him that Hussein wants to see you. But they were having food at that time and when the and Mr. Ifam Salam came, Salam alaikum salam and he said who is Zuhair ibn Laqain? Zuhair was there, he said, Imam Hussein wants to see you. The moment he said that, the food in his hand, the morsel of food in his hand actually dropped. But he knew the time has come now, I will have to go. But he hesitated. And there are so many there, all of them knew that the time has come because we were avoiding, but now he will have to go. As he was hesitant, his wife from behind said, how can you hesitate? going when Fatima's son has summoned you. I mean, there is no way out. You have to go. This is Ali's son, Fatima's son. I mean, this is Hussein ibn Ali. So he stood up. At that time, he didn't want it to go. But he came, and very hesitantly. And he came and sat with Mawla in his camp. Mawla said, I, want to, I will sit with you alone. And they sat for half an hour. We don't know. History is silent because we don't know. Imam Hussein, what did he say? What talk it was. But when he left Sayyidu Shuhada, he was smiling. Sayyidu Shuhada acted only bilhaq. He enjoined the truth. And also enjoined upon being patient, forbearing. He stood up and he was smiling and as he came back, while well, they were all waiting to, to hear from him, they saw a smile on his lips. And they said, Zuhair, what happened? He said, I'm going. I have found the way. I have found the way. Quran says, Inni zahibun ila rabbi sayahadini. It's a very important ayah. Inni zahibun ila rabbi Sayyidini, I am going in the way of Allah and He shall guide me. 
You see, he said, I have found a way. And he told his wife that I am divorcing you, not because that we have any problem, but I am divorcing you to release you, so that if there is any problem after, if I survive or die, I do not know, I, you are now free. And his wife said, what freedom is this? If Zainab and Umm Kulthum are going to be imprisoned after Zain, and if they are going to suffer, what sort of freedom is this? Well, Zuhair said, well, this is what Hussain ibn Ali has told me, that your wife should not suffer. Do you know what happened then? That after, on the day of Ashura and one day later, a ghulam, a slave, entered the plain of Karbala with a coffin taken from Zuhair's wife from Kufa, not far from Karbala. Came with the coffin with the instruction from Zuhair's wife that if you go there, if you find Zuhair's body has not been given coffin, you give the coffin and bury him. That man came there and he looked around and came back to Kufa and said, who to give coffin and who to bury because when I went there I saw all of them in one state could I give coffin without having given coffin to Hussein ibn Ali and without your permission I could not have given coffin therefore I have brought it back well this is what I was so bilhaq and we don't know we know only of Hur having come there are 30 people in Karbala who did Tawbah and came to Imam Hussain. Apart from Hawr. 30. They came and said, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, we did not know. And Mawla said, you sit down and I will explain to you the truth. Fatawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bil sabr. And they stood up to say, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, forgive us. For we have come up to this day, Ashura. By this time, three days water has been stopped. We are responsible, Imam Sayyid Islam said. Well, I have forgiven you, and so has Allah. Allah la'anatullah ala al-qawm al-zalimin. Wa sayya'lamu al-lazina walamu ayya mun qalabin yanqalibun inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajim. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta s-sami'u al-alim. Ya Allah, we pray unto you. The thawab of this majlis is given to Mullah Bashir Rahim. And Ya Allah, forgive all our mu'mineen mu'minat wherever they are buried and restore the health of those who are ill and sick. Ya Allah, bihaqqa Muhammad wa alayhi wa forgive us our sins. For we are all sinners and pardon us in the dunya wa l'akhir. For those who have got their parents, Ya Allah, grant them long life. And those who have lost their parents, Ya Allah, bless them with maqfirah. Rahmanullahu wa nqara al-fatiha.